Hello, here's the news of this hour on TSOLI TV. I am Mopola Batekale here, also make the headlines. Tinopela walks out during plenary. Senator joins plenary till November 24th. United Kingdom Parliament may debate petition against Nigeria. Egwavon named NFF technical director. And now, the news in details. The lawmaker representing is saying Tesuaji Wajo Akajala Federal constituency of your state, Shinapella, has expressed displeasure for not being given an opportunity to speak during the plenary session on Tuesday. Pella, during the session, made an attempt to raise a motion of urgent public importance, but was not recognized by the presiding officer, Medwase. The lawmaker, who was not satisfied by the ruling of the deputy speaker, walked out while expressing dissatisfaction with the ruling. Subsequently, in the tweet, Mr. Pella stated that not even the speaker, Femi Gwajabi Amila, or his deputy, can suppress his voice. As a member of the representative that we voted for by the people of the Senate, I deserve to speak with this. And I have a right to speak here. And I have been raising up my hand from the beginning of the session to this time. So you need to allow me to speak here. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sowolu has condemned the attack on and South protesters by security forces on Tuesday evening in Lekki Toll Plaza. He also announced suspension of all state activities for three days in solidarity with the ongoing and South protest and agitation across the state, adding that flag at all government facilities will be flown half mast in the next three days. He made this disclosure in a live broadcast this morning of where he also gave updates on the shootings of protesters. According to Samuelu, he went all out yesterday night with members of his team and the visited hospitals, mortuaries, to get first-hand information on casualties, adding that 24 of the injured were being treated at three hospitals, General Hospital had 10, Reddington Hospitals 8 and another hospital 6, while three of the victims had surgery and about four will be discharged today. However, Samuelu apologized to the youth, reiterating their anger was justified, also pleaded with parents and guardians to restrain their children in wards as government make effort to contain the situation. The Senate on Tuesday yesterday suspended its plenary and adjourned till November 24, 2020. Senate President Ahmed Lawan said the suspension of plenary for three weeks will enable ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government to appear before relevant committees to defend the 2021 budget estimates. He said the period will also enable the Joint Senate Committee on Petroleum, Upstream, Downstream and Gas to conduct public hearings on the Petroleum Industry Bill PIB, which scaled second reading just yesterday. We want that any MB MDA that fails to appear before the relevant committees to defend their estimates would have the figures allocated to them in the appropriation bill. Suspected hoodlums have set fire to Television Continental, aka TVC at K2 Lagos. A popular talk show program, Your View, was on when the hoodlums besieged the station. The program host, Mariah Falabi Brown, who said the hoodlums entered in a van, asked to go on a commercial break, and the station had since then been stopped. Videos online confirmed by workers at the station said the assailant set fire to the station over its connection to a former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu. Temper rose when soldiers besieged the Lekito Gate on Tuesday night and opened fire on protesters. Eyewitnesses claimed that seven people were confirmed dead and many injured. The news on T Solid TV will be back right after this. The nails so far.
Welcome back and now to some foreign stories. No fewer than 148,864 individuals have signed a petition asking the United Kingdom to sanction members of Nigerian government and police force for human rights abuses over the NSARS movement. This was as of 9.20 a.m. local time when a newsman visited the official website of the British Parliament. The petition, which was created by one Silas Ojo, seeks to generate 100 signatures. According to information obtained from the website, any petition signed by over 100,000 individuals will be discussed, stating that a date for debate would be announced on the petition. The petition noted that sanctioning government officials will enhance accountability in the country. The petition on the UK government and parliament website reads, there have been deeply concerning reports of Nigerian police force unit SARS engaging in illegal activities and human rights abuses and there have also been reports of police firing at protesters calling for SARS to be disbanded. It added that Nigerians, especially the youths, have taken to the streets in protest over violation of human rights and extrajudicial killings by police personnel, specifically those of the defunct special anti-robbery squad. Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta on Tuesday pushed for constitutional changes to resolve the cycles of election violence in the country, a hot-button issue that has divided the political class. Kenyatta's pleas came ahead of a much anticipated report and suggested reforms to be issued in the coming days after two years of public consultations that have seen leaders traverse the nation drumming up support for the process. The Building Bridges Initiative BBI came about after Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga in 2018 stunned the nation by shaking hands and pledging to promote unity after a drawn-out 2017 election battle left more than 90 people dead. Kenya, with its diverse population and large ethnic voting blocs, has long suffered politically motivated communal violence around election time, notably after a 2007 poll when over 1,100 people died. That election led to a power-sharing government in which Odinga was prime minister and a new constitution in 2010. A Chinese soldier has been handed back by Indian authorities after he strayed across a contested border in the Himalayan region. The People's Liberal Army PLA soldier was apprehended in Demchok area of Ladakh while the soldier was deorientated and was provided with medical assistance and oxygen. Tensions have been high between the two countries since the deadly clash in a disputed area in June. The latest incident comes after multiple rounds of military-level talk between the two sides to defuse the situation. Soldiers from both countries have periodically skirmished along the poorly demarcated border called the Line of Actual Control (LAC), while both sides have accused each other of straying into the territory, which have sometimes resulted in clashes. And now moving on to the exciting world of sport, the Executive Committee on Nigeria Football Federation and FF has approved the appointment of former Super Eagles head coach Augustin Egwaban as its new technical director with immediate effect. The appointment was announced after the board's emergency virtual meeting held yesterday and press release from the NFF media department confirming the appointment. NFF also rubber stamped the proposal from the league management company LMC for the new 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League season to kickstart any moment from November 15th and end by June 2021 in compliance with the federal government's COVID-19 protocols and other requirements. Lionel Messi became the first player to score in 16 successive Champions League campaigns after his penalty opened his scoring for Barcelona against Ferenc Varos. Baca was 2-0 up by the interval at Camp Nou, with Messi scoring from the sport in the 27th minute and Ansu Fati volleying in a second. Messi's strike means the Argentine superstar is now netted in Europe's elite club competition in 16 consecutive seasons. No player in Champions League history has scored in more campaigns over 
broad than passes number 10, who is level with Manchester United legend Ryan Giggs in that regard. Meanwhile, Messi may be entering the twilight of his Barca career. One player who is at the other end of the spectrum is 17-year-old Fatih with his 42nd-minute effort. The Spain international, who enjoyed a brilliant breakthrough season last term, became the first player to have scored two Champions League goals before turning 18. And with that, we come to the end of the news. Here is a recap of the major headline. Chinopella walks out during plenary. Senate adjourns plenary till November 24th. United Kingdom Parliament may debate petition against Nigeria. And in the world of sport, you heard Eguavo named NFF Technical Director. Please do not forget to always adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. The news was compiled by Hope TJOK I am Mobile App by Dick Kale. Good day and thank you for watching.